it's Karen from Lion Gate Farm and today I am going to teach you how to make a frog specifically the birthday party frog so join me and we'll have a little fun it's a little bit harder project because we're gonna do lots of toes and wrapping and you'll have fun and make sure you post them so today we are making the, the cutest frog ever. This is a great little gift. It's a birthday party frog. You know, you don't have to put his hat on or his bow tie or his balloon and he's still cute. In fact, you could make him into the frog prince, make him a little crown and he can hold a little heart or not or whatever. Anyways, so let's get started. Again, we're going to make this guy. So the you know the colors can vary we're going to use i'm going to show you the colors we're going to use today you probably need a half an ounce of lemon lime and then a quarter ounce of leaf um, some kind of yellow if you're making the balloon in the hat and black and then white for his belly and i'm using the dhg snow it's super white and then core wool. And for all of you out there paying attention to my core wool supply, it will be here on the 14th. We will be restocked with many, many, many hundreds of pounds. <laughs> so another thing you need is pipe cleaners. So there's all different kinds of pipe cleaners. Today I am using just a regular, you're going to need five regular 12 inch pipe cleaners. I did this with 18 gauge wire once for his feet. It was tedious wrapping. The pipe cleaners make his feet pretty easy. So it will help you out because you know how I like to make things easy, make it smarter, not harder. So you're gonna need that. You'll need wire cutters. I already have my feet pre-cut, but I will talk about them. Um, and then if you're doing the balloon, this is 26 gauge floral wire. It has its own little cutter on it. It's kind of cool. Um, that I make the stem of, his, or the string of his balloon. So a ruler is always helpful. You know, just all the normal stuff that I always give you. I will post um, a JPEG in the Langate Farm Fiber Arts Facebook group for you. Remember to print it. You left click, save as JPEG, a picture. And when you print it out, print it as an eight and a half by 11. And that will give you pretty good size pretty good size for that. Uh, message me if you have trouble printing it. I can always like message it to you. So first thing we're going to make is a ball. Now something interesting is if you have the smaller dryer balls, you can start on a dryer ball so that you don't have to make the bottom half of his body. Like this base could be a dryer ball. Um, I tried one with it and it worked. You know, I wanted to try it before I told you to do it. So the first thing we're going to do is make a ball. So you just need a piece of core wool. You need your skewer or whatever you like to wrap on. And, you know, the ball is the most basic shape that you can make. And we're just going to make a giant ball. A lot of people like to tie a knot and wrap around a knot. I just start on the skewer. Same thing. We're going to secure that. So yeah, the two basic shapes we're making today are a ball and a football and then feet. And obviously the feet, the toes on this guy are the hardest. This is not a realistic looking frog. I played around with one after I did this. It took me a while to get him how I like him. He was kind of fun, but he has, he's, he's not whimsical. So he's not my favorite. So I slid my skewer off. And I'm getting there. I'm starting. And I'm going to wrap the other way now. And I'm wrapping pretty tight because, you know, again, work smarter, not harder. Let's, the tighter you wrap, the less you got to poke. I've been busy working out in the dye house this week. We had one nice day. What a nice day. I puttered around in the garden that day. And then it's been raining like mad. And it started raining like mad again. So 
no gardening for me. All right, my, see how it's pretty tight. I want you to see how tight that is. I'm probably just gonna do one more wrap. You know, these guys always come out different sizes for me, so I don't really have a set size, but I will measure this current ball. Seems like this guy's gonna come out a little bit bigger than my other guy. So one, one end you wanna keep kind of flat because it's gonna sit him down. So a note that I wanted to tell you guys, you know, you're always like on your pad, you're like, oh, does he sit flat? Well, you know, once you work on these wool pads, they get lumpy. Test off to the side to see if they sit flat because sometimes it will surprise you that they do not or they're a little bit off center. So this isn't quite round, but it's close because we're going to add legs there and there. All right. So this guy is, it's a three inch ball, three inch by three inch. We're good. Now we need a football. So same premise because their heads are really shaped like a football. So you're going to need your skewer again. Here, I have one partially done. This is the one I was working on on the dryer ball. See it in there? And then we want this football shape right here to start with. I keep picking up my ruler when I really want this. All right. So same thing, but most of the time you wrap now, you want to keep it in the center. Just wrap because it's going to naturally make a football. So the one thing you want to keep in mind is the head is as wide as the body. Otherwise it will look silly. They're kind of like the same. So as you poke this, poke, poke the sides down into a football shape. I'm going to go ahead and take the skewer out. See how my middle came out? It's because I didn't put my finger there. This. I've been getting a lot of messages on people asking me if they can teach my videos. Have at it. Teach as many people as you want. Hey, but mention, mention that you got your, you know, your ideas of your pattern from, from our YouTube, from Lion Gate Farm, so other people can go and make other stuff too. See how I'm getting this football shape. It's kind of like ET. It won't end up looking like a football. It's just how we start out. What is Rip chewing on, Cannon? Just on. Okay. <laughs> just making sure. Today, Rip got cut off from freedom. We built a fence so Rip cannot go wandering. Since he's been feeling better, he's been just la 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 going wherever he wants. <laughs> Lots more sniffing involved. All right, so now we're going to round this up a little bit. We have some loose stuff right there. We're going to attach it to the body. Now, I don't want, I want you to end up with a chin right here. You don't, you want to kind of, they have no neck really. We'll add some, some white to fill that in and, and make it come out. But So this is a basic well, it's a little bit harder than a basic problem because of the feet. Thank you. 
switch to a single needle because I really want that head attached. I'm stabbing way down inside. We can use some of this from the body. Then we're gonna add a little glue. Let's add a little wool glue around his neck. That doesn't look like much right now, does it? It's going to, though. Just remember, you gotta get this all attached, get them all kind of smooth. You know what I say. The harder you work underneath, the better your top is going to come out. Now one of the cool things, you can make a ball for the top and then just squish it, but one of the things, you know, so your frogs have lit you can kind of squeeze and see what's going to happen. So let's poke a little here. Remember, your wool is going the direction you poke it. So now we're going to poke up on this part. Is he chewing on the chair? His paws were distracting me. So now we have a basic frog shape, but he needs little eyeballs. So the first time I did this, so what I'm doing is I took a little like three inch piece and I'm just rolling it up. Just making a little roll. You can use your skewer if you're more comfortable with that, but then I'm going to roll it again. So I'm making this eye bump. And the first time I did, it, I put them both in the middle and he looked really silly. So and I actually cut off his eyeballs <laughs> because I was like, something is not right with my frog. Like I said, I have to make like five of these before I get it right. Anyways, so I put his eyeballs in different places and I ended up liking them on the side because I went and looked at pictures and I'm like, oh my gosh, I had them in the wrong place. So they kind of go off to the side like this kind of in line with like the neck the best way i can tell you let's add another eyeball and i guess they're not smooth yet again like a little three inch piece roll it up and then this one's gonna go over here this side Love that everybody's posting the stuff that they're making in the group. Keep posting that and post whatever you make. I want to see everybody's creative ideas. So we have two little eye bumps. And then, so mark the middle on each side. So we know his mouth is going to go down. And come back up, go back down, and come back up. That's my favorite mouth. Now you can just go straight across, um, but that is my favorite one that I've done so far. So that's what we're gonna do. And now I'm gonna accentuate this a little bit more. I'm forcing that wool up into his brain, into his head. <laughs> Because I want this to stick out. You can even take some wool and fold it in half, kind of like this, you know, to build up 
build this up some more. And then that will hide the eye seams. And we're going to know where his lips are. And then you can do it again on the bottom just to exaggerate. So fold it, spread it out, and then put it back on here. You can see it's already starting to look like a frog, but I lost my up and down, but that's okay. So we're gonna go up here. So I'm gonna sit and I'm gonna stab this guy for a while until I get him nice and firm and I have his lips out where I want them. And then um, we're gonna put the color on him after you get it, after we get him all nice and firm. So it's probably gonna take me like 15 minutes. All right, so I got my frog all solidified. And now I'm gonna take my lemon lime color I'm just breaking it up into a few pieces, prepping it. So our goal here, again, is going to be to color our frog. And remember how we just made lips? We're gonna do it again. But in this roving, do you see this? I don't know if you can see the colors. See how they go this way? So you kinda gotta decide if you want them to be smooth. If you want them to be all messy, just mess it all up. I think I'm gonna run them this way. So just like we put the other pieces on, I am going to follow along here, along the mouth that I have poked in. Now, I don't want the color and the eye bumps. So I'm gonna pull it to the middle See, this is where I start to get excited because now I can see a frog starting to happen. This color is a little bit darker than what I used on my original frog, but I like it better. It's got like a lot of blue green in it. And now we're gonna we're gonna apply ourselves and step it all in. Let's see if you could decide as I do now. I'm going to switch to white for a minute. I'm going to switch to the snow white. The snow white is going to go, kind of decide where the end of your mouth is. Snow white's going to start at the end of the mouth, come down in towards the neck. It's going to come along here. Remember, our Get it up by the mouth over here. I'm really glad felting is not super technical because it's like whatever works. There aren't any laws to break. All right, we want to keep making this stick out. I guess I didn't talk about the back of its head. Back of his head is round, doesn't stick out like this. I'm just gonna color in. I, I drew a line kind of along where his belly's gonna go. And his belly goes like in line with the outside of his mouth. And this is where you can make him as fat as you want him or as skinny. I like him to have a belly. Okay. 
and on the underside it just comes around here just a little bit so we're just gonna bring this in a half circle on the bottom I love this white snow by DHG. It sure felt really good. It's very similar. Is he just like putting his toy under the chair? And yeah, he does that. It's like an ADD thing. I have an ADD dog. Trust me, if I don't feed him at the right time, he lets me know. We'll get that all poked in in a minute. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take those little pieces that I tore off. And I'm going to apply them to his body. We'll get to his eyeballs in a minute. I like to get his whole body covered before I deal with the eyeballs. And I'm just kind of tacking it on right now because you know I'm going to go back and I'm going to adhere it all. You know, and if there's something you guys are wanting to make that I have not made. Okay, not super complicated. You know, like a dragon or something. I mean, I can make a dragon, but it would take like 900 videos. Because I have a dragon, a big dragon I made. Um, but something, you know, a little animal or something. Tell me and I'll work it out and we'll make it. Message me. Go to the Lion Gate Farm page and shoot me a message. Or if there's something you see that I'm using that you want and I don't have it in my store, or I may have it in my store, I just may not have it on the website. So again, I'm just tacking it all on. Oops, I want this to, I want that to come around. I did that wrong. Let's go this way. Just tacking it on. It's starting to look like a frog. As you can just see, I'm just tearing off little pieces and applying them. Our goal is to cover that core wall. We're not really building him up huge, but let's put put on some eyes. So first I want you to put some white on. So take a little piece of the DHG snow. So we took our little white and we're going to, you know how I always have you like draw a line along the bottom of the eye and fold it up. This will help us get definition right there. Nice smooth fold. Don't worry if it goes over the whole eye bump. It just makes your eye bigger. Which is what we want because they have giant eyeballs. Sure sign of spring is the frogs are back. There's eight. I have a big giant pond and there's 80 million frogs singing at night now. That's sign number one that the, it's spring. Sign number two is the vultures are back. We have this whole flock of vultures that hang out. And yesterday when John and I were going into Eagle Point, there was like 35 of them circling around. Hope those are not all ours. So let's get this eye bump nice and smooth. Get 
You don't want your white hairs in here, your white fibers in there. Now we're going to, so remember I had that other color. I like to use a lighter color on his eyes. So I, again, I fold it, stretch it. And first we're going to put it back there about halfway is where we want it. Put that in. We're going to cover up the excess with the other color here in a minute. You know, you don't have to use the opposing color for his eyes, but I kind of like it. Gives him a little depth. So let's make another one. Again, fold it, fold it, stretch it, place it halfway. Whoops, poke myself. Don't do what I do. Who's ready for St. Patrick's Day? Making green frogs for that. Okay, so next up, let's let's get this all in. His mouth goes to there. Make that white line nice and solid. So you have a little bit of black. Just gonna roll a little ball. I don't even roll it into a ball. I just gather it with my needle. Kind of draw the, the eyeball as I go. And I know you're thinking, wait a minute, you couldn't see this whole eyeball. Well, I'm going to show you why in a minute. Stab I don't really stab in the middle of the eyeball too much, just around the edges. Because that makes it, pooch it makes it pooch out in the middle. So once you get the eyeball in, you're just going to take a couple fibers roll them. We're going to outline his eye. I like to lay it down, stab it on either end of where I'm going. Go up, around, and I know you know we're not done. All right, so then let's take a little teeny bit of our eyeball color, our eye bump color, and we're going to just go over top and it's kind of like an eyelid so now we're going to get serious about poking this smooth hmm it's getting cute all right so now what you would do after you have this all both eyeballs done and smooth you would just take a little piece of this and we're going to let it fringe into the back of the eyeball so it will blend all blend in and you get this all poked nice so i'm going to do the other eyeball we're also going to take a little bit of black and we're going to put it in his mouth. Remember, catch all the stray black fibers. You don't want those in your white and then it won't look clean. I like my colors to stay clean to one another. I don't like that 
go lump right there. I've got a little wad of fiber that's misbehaving. He's going to have like a snaggle tooth smile. Remember, every one of these guys is going to come out different. And he's also going to have, you're going to want to put some nose indents. I don't really color those in. I just make them. Okay, so let's go. I'm going to go back and I'm going to make the other eye and I'm going to smooth him out. And then I'm going to come back and we'll put on legs. Okay, so I've got him all stabbed. Nice and smooth. It did take me about 15 minutes. Um, you see how I ran? You can see how this blends into his eyes. Now, if you want, you can put some black along here. If you want to make it a girl, you can add some eyelashes. But now we're going to do the legs. And this is what's going to take you the time. So you're going to take one of your 12-inch pipe cleaners, bend it in half, cut it, and then we're going to twist them together and then bend them up. So there are fingers, right? Yeah. But you don't want the, the toes and the fingers that long. And if you want to fuss with the, the pipe cleaners, you can. They're about an inch and a half. And if you want to be super persnickety, you can go an inch and a half, maybe a little longer, and then a little longer. Oh, come on, my cutters won't cut. And then a little shorter. So that that second finger and that's one of those toes is longer than the rest. Okay. And then you just need a piece of pipe cleaner probably not very long. So I go in the finger and I wrap it this way and I just wrap it around a little bit. Okay. And then we're going to cut a piece off. So that is a hand. The part with the hand has the little, little arm. Okay. So that's a hand. For the feet, you're just going to do the same thing, one toe a little longer, and you're going to twist them together. And I will demo, I will demonstrate that for you. So you have pipe cleaner, cut it in half, cut them in half, or bend them in half, twist about three times. All right, so there's our maybe four times. Maybe four times, four or five. But again, you have, you need one toe longer. So cut this one, cut this one. I just leave one toe longer. And if you want to be persnickety, they have five toes on their bottom feet, but I'm not being persnickety. I'm making four toes. All right, so let me show you how to wrap these. And then um, we're going to power wax them. You know, I love power wax. So you're going to take your toe color or your body color. Let's start with the bottom feet. We'll put our hands aside. And we're going to split off about six inches and then split it again. So you end up with four pieces to start with. You're going to wrapping. This is good wrapping practice. So, I wrap away from myself thin. You, we don't want it to overlap too much. Because we're using a pipe cleaner, it's going to catch your fiber really well. Pull it tight. See how skinny it's getting? So I'm letting go every time. That makes it untwist. When you get to the end, I want you to bend in. You don't need pliers. About an eighth of an inch. Now, remember which way you were wrapping. I was wrapping that way, so I need to go that way. You always want to wrap in the same direction. We're going to wrap back down. We're going to get a lot of practice wrapping. And then go around this part here. 
and give it a little stab to secure it onto the second toe. You can move the other toes out of the way. So again, I wrap away from myself. Every time I go around, I make sure I'm not twisted. I move my finger up. Going all the way to the end. And the reason that we're bending this in is because we don't want that wire to show. And again, I wrapped this way, so I gotta... It's okay if this little toe gets big at the end. And then let's pull this toe up, this toe up, and we're gonna go around. We're building up his little foot here with the extra. Twist it on, stab it. Get my other six inch piece, split it. I'm not doing the long toe yet. I'm doing the short toe first. See, I can feel when it starts to twist. Make sure you go all the way to the end. Bend it in. Remember, I'm wrapping that way. So all, if, you, if you wrap the opposite way, it will get loose. And then I'll show you another little trick to make sure they're nice and tight. Now, if you don't have power wax, you don't need it. It's, if your feet are, then I want you to pay Special attention, make sure your toes are wrapped nice and tight. Power wax is your friend if you wrap loose. Okay, we're going to the fourth toe. The long toe. Just because it's long doesn't mean you bend in extra. I went past the end a little bit, now I'm gonna bend it over. So we wanna keep that toe long. Again, we're going to wrap down here, on here, and then move your toes up, and you should have a foot. So this foot is going to go right here. I like this, the long toe to be second in. So when I do the next foot, I need to leave this one long. Now, you can power wax them now, or you can wait a minute and attach, just attach them. So this foot is gonna go on right here. Now you have a lot of wire in there, so be careful with your needles. Just attach it on there. Now I've gone through, this is, I still haven't gone through a quarter of an ounce. Um, I like to keep track of how much fiber we're using so you know if you're gonna order it, how much you need of a color, like estimate how many frogs you're gonna make. They're kind of addictive. Okay, so we got one foot on. Pretty cute, huh? Now he needs a haunch. Oh, we are going to use a little bit of core wool. Just a tiny bit. You need a little four inch piece of core wool and you're going to make a little pillow. And we're going to put it right here. We're going to add this little pillow. Oh, okay. I think I got out of the frame. Hope I didn't. Did I get out of frame? Not too bad. Okay, good. I need to Velcro my wool pad to this plastic pad on the table. So we're making just his little haunch. And then we're going to cover it. If you wanted, you could make it out of the green, but you don't need to. And you don't want to go past the bottom, because remember, you want him to sit flat. 
I suppose you could make him into an ornament so it wouldn't matter. Just a happy little frog. I really like this lemon lime color for him. It's more frog color than the other color I used before. Okay, so he has his little haunch and his foot. But see how he keeps rocking? It's because he doesn't have another foot on yet. So you need to make another bottom foot. But meanwhile, let's make a arm. So this is his arm. Same premise as the feet. Do I want an extra long toe? I'm not, I'm not going to worry about that. If you want an extra long toe, you can make an extra long toe. Same as the feet. We're going to wrap. Whoops. See that? My fiber started to come apart. Let's see what's going to happen. Let me take these toes off of it. I went down to a very thin piece there. Oh my goodness. Alright, I'm just going to take it down and secure it. Around his arm. I'm going all the way to the end. Oh, I see what happened. Don't do what I do. It's a big piece. Okay. Let's just stab that in. Get it out of the way. Okay. Next toe. The next finger. Because we're on fingers. It's just like the toes. I think I like using wire better because I can get my toes skinnier. But it's okay. Wire better than pipe, pipe cleaners. They get pretty skinny once we power wax them. Again, we're going to wrap the extra around his arm. I'm going to actually wrap. I had a little mishap there the first time, so I'm going to make this part a little fatter. And you guys, I've been doing this a long time, so I'm kind of fast at wrapping. It's not a race. Take your time. It takes a while to get the rhythm of the non-twisting, letting it go, wrapping it all in the same direction. Sometimes you have to take it off and start again. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I've done that. That's why I want you to use pipe cleaners because it will make it way easier for you. Okay, I'm going back down around his arm. You can see his little arm is growing every time we add fiber. That's good. Okay, one last piece. This is a little bit thick, so I'm going to draft it out. Because this piece is so long, it is twisting. So I have to let it go every time. So you see, every time I go back, you can see pipe cleaner. But then I cover it up and keep going down. Now, I want to make sure I have all the pipe cleaner covered. All right, I do. You see how that twisted on me? I just want to go around his little arm. And I'm actually going to tear it off this time. And I'm not even going to... We're going to put that on there like that. I'm going to use that fringe a little bit to help... secure this. 
And then I'm going to take a little extra. So the difference in pipe cleaners and armature wire is if you bend pipe cleaners back and forth too much, they will break. Where armature wire is a little, little bit more forgiving. So if you're planning on moving him around a lot, you might want to use like an 18 gauge armature wire. It is harder to wrap all the toes. Um, and I suggest using some kind of wax on the wire to get it to stick because they're so tiny. So I'm working this all in. We'll cover this up in a minute. So there he has one hand. You, you can bend his fingers. You can make him do funny things with his fingers too. All right, so now we're gonna do the next. <laughs> I don't wanna do that. Um, we're gonna do the next arm and the next foot and then I'll come back and we'll make his balloon. And I am just going into the second quarter ounce. So this will take me about as long as it took me to make the first two. All right, we're back, we're running. So I wanna fix one thing. I've gone, I put all my legs on, I added a little piece. I need a little more right there, just to cover up the bottom. Just cover this up, it covers up all your seams. Make it all nice and smooth. See, that could be poked in a little bit more. Um, I don't like, I mean, I think he's cute, but I, I want that to come out further. So I'm gonna add a little piece right here. And yes, it is covering up his little nose, but that's okay. Oh, look, that makes him even cuter. Because this came out further. You know, don't be afraid to make modifications of the design to make it to your liking. So because I added that little piece on the top, I need to add a little piece on the bottom here. We're probably gonna have to put some more black in there. But we're ready to power wax his fingers and toes. Or I can just talk about it and I can do it later. Cause see his fingers and toes look really good. Um, Cause I wrapped them tight enough. So if you wrapped them tight enough and you're happy with them um, there, gave him a little chin here. Look that in, he's pretty cute. So actually I'm not gonna power wax, I'm just gonna show you. So see what happens when, if you power wax them, they get super skinny in here and out here, that's where we bent it over, it gets fat. A lot of times when you use power wax, you can see the wax, like leaves a little, like there's a little spot right there. I actually took the heat gun you could use a blow dryer, probably a lot safer than the heat gun. And hit it with the heat gun and it melted the wax into the wool. That's why you get the little color change in the toes. So to, you know, order some power wax, it'll, it'll firm up your toes. But I'm not gonna do his, I'm just gonna move on to a balloon and show you guys how to make a balloon. I think we did this before, but I'm going to do it again. So you need a nice healthy piece of 26 gauge wire. And you don't want the balloon too tall or it won't stand up. So just like a little bit, I am doing, it's about four inches. So I'm gonna do about three. I'm gonna make a little shape up here. I'm gonna twist this all together. So I don't like this end piece. I'm gonna make, make it go up in there. So that's gonna be my balloon. 
Come on, twist. It's so skinny. But balloon string is skinny. I'm twisting it all the way down. So the actual size we end up with is about six inches. That's what we end up with. Now, I'm going to take some yellow because I like yellow balloons on frogs. And I am going to start, I'm just going to wrap it around this gently. You don't want to collapse that very thin wire. I see the wire in there. Kind of stab into the wire. Kind of visualize that shape you had underneath. And yes, right now it's flat. We will make it round here in a minute. But first we need to get a base. If you're following along, make sure that you click follow, click like, and comment. Make all kinds of comments. I'm trying to think what I can ask you this time. So hands down, Cannon says that everybody's favorite candy is Reese's. The Reese's eggs. Cadbury mini eggs are still my favorite. Okay, I'm going to make a little pillow. It's a little tiny pillow. And if you want, you could make this balloon out of core wool and cover it. I just, it's so small. Then we're going to make a pillow for the other side. It's so small that I feel like we don't want to. Another pillow. So what we're doing is building out the sides. You know, that base helped us maintain our shape. And now we're going to take a little teeny piece here. Let's draft it out. We're going to wrap it. You don't want to make this balloon too big. It will be too heavy for your frog to hold up on that 20, 26 gauge wire. It's kind of like when we did the elephant video, we did a balloon. I think... My birthday party elephants. I like making birthday party animals. So that's just pretty solid. So you can see I'm rolling it so I can get this round, round shape of a balloon. This is the DHG sun color that we're using here. Oh no, I'm lying. This is yolk. This is not sun. Sun works though. This is sun. This is yolk. It's a good yellow. Good chick yellow too. Now we have this little wad of wire here. We're going to twist it some more. Okay, let's. So just stab your balloon until it's nice and smooth. I got a little seam I want to cover up right there. When you're covering up seams, you just need a thin layer. So most balloons aren't perfectly round. We get narrower down here. I thought about doing more than one balloon, but I would need a different wire. 
for it to hold up that another blue. Okay, again, I'm holding this in my hand because it's hard for me to look down for a very long time. You all know that. So don't do as I do, work with it on your pad. Be very mindful of your fingers if you're doing it my way. I've really had to adapt how I needle felt and how long I could needle felt for since I broke my neck. I call it broken neck girl problems, but you know what? I'm alive, that's all that matters. All right, so we have a balloon. We have a balloon. Now this I am gonna power wax because it changes the look of the balloon. So we're gonna take some power wax, spread it all on here. You don't wanna to get too much. And so what I'm doing is I'm working it into the fiber. With the balloon, you can just massage it away. So you don't want these clumpy things. Now, the cool thing about power wax is it gets hard pretty quick. It takes a full 24 hours to dry. But as it starts to solidify, you can like mold, it help it mold your felting. And it takes away all the little hairies and balloons. It makes balloons look like latexy. Also, if you have another color fiber hanging out on your yellow, it will become apparent. So work it into your fiber. And then again, if you want it, if you end up with some that looks kind of white, because it does change the color, you can see it changes the color. Um, you hit it with the heat gun and it should bring your vibrant color back out that you're working with. Heat gun, hair dryer, you probably all have a hair dryer. If you do use heat gun, be very careful that you don't um, burn your wool. So down here at the white, at the base, you want to make it look like it has a bottom of the balloon. I see a black fiber we're going to pick off of there. Maybe, maybe not. I think there's a piece of someone's farm. You know, I always say that about when you're working with fiber, you can see where the animals have come from. That's kind of neat. All right, so now you're just gonna take your dude, your frog dude, and I like to go around his fingers. This is his thumb. And then back up around the balloon. And then it close his fingers in, his thumb goes over that, and he's got his balloon. All right, so now he needs a hat. Wait a minute, I wanna get rid of that end. So if I use the heat gun or a hair dryer, I um, wait till I have everything power waxed and then I go for it because it's kind of a waste. All right, let me get the power wax off my fingers. It does make your hands kind of tacky, so it's good for handling wool. All right, let's give him a little hat. We're gonna make a little hat for him. You're gonna get your skewer out, a small piece of wool, holding it right where you want it. You want it thicker at the bottom. You can make him a big hat. You can make him a little hat. I 
you definitely want a cone shape. You can make it polka dotted. You can decorate it with like a little tinsel stuff like I did on the other one. You get the idea here. Now, a lot of times when I put these hats, before you take the skewer out of this one, make sure you are poking right here. You do not want the center to come out of this hat. I'm gonna hold it in my fingers and gently poke around the base here. I started to say, when I make um, these hats, for my little animals. A lot of times I'll use that 26 gauge wire and make it so you can put it on and off. Well, I tried to do that with the frog, but there was no way to go around his head because his eyeballs were in the way. So make sure you felt this all in a nice cone. and then to attach it to his head. So if I was gonna wrap this little tinsely stuff on here, I would just, I would do it before I put them on. You can use locks, you can use whatever you need. <laughs> it's so cute. I'm just gonna stab it onto his head. He's just gonna have a yellow hat. It's like a dunce cap. Doesn't it look like a dunce cap? <laughs> so I might put polka dots on this later. I just wanted to get you to the basics. He's pretty cute, but a bow tie, same thing. So for a bow tie, I'm gonna take a little bit of this yellow fiber. And now I'm gonna draw my bow tie. So a bow tie is two triangles. And remember what drawing does for you. It makes lines where you can fold your fiber in to get a smooth edge. Boy, somebody just went speeding by outside. Size on your bow tie is subjective. Remember, when you're doing a flat piece like this, you want to keep flipping it, get it nice and smooth. Notice I'm sh I'm stabbing shallow because remember, only the end of your needle works, and this piece is not very thick, so I don't need to stab down into my pad. Alternatively, you could take a piece of felt or fabric and make a little bow tie, cut it out and just put it on him. And I need, I need, Cannon, could you throw me that dark green down there? So I have this olive green stuff that I will use. Around the middle of his bow tie. And all I did was wrap it around. And then before I put it on him, I will take another little piece of this color. You don't have to use green. You can use any color you want. And I'm going to go around his neck. You know, you could make a regular tie instead of a bow tie, too. That would be really cute. Like a polka dotted bow tie to match a polka dotted hat. Be totally cute. And then I'm going to stab on his bow tie. He needs his nose put back. Remember, I made his nose go away. I like how this top lip sticks out over his bottom lip on this guy. Every frog you make is going to be different. Now I'm just tucking 
I'm not really felting, I'm just tucking the edges in to make it look like a ribbon. And there you have it. You can put a little white dot in his eye if you want. You know, at the two o'clock portion. I kind of like him without it. There you have it. One birthday party frog. Now, I can't wait to see you guys post yours. So head over to the Lion Gate Farm Southern Oregon Felting page and post away. We love seeing new members. Okay, I couldn't stand it. We had to make it more festive. So I used um, some bits of some locks. Um, I just cut little teeny pieces and made little dots and put them in. And then I just cut a little floof and poked it in. And he's way more festive now. Mr. Festive Frog. He's ready for somebody's birthday.